All right, we're back. Let's get into it. I know last time, by last time I mean yesterday, I said I might do the picks for the uh, main stage for regular worlds um, tier list to uh, rank, uh, you know, all the teams at worlds. Um, I still might do that, but for today, I saw that the pickums dropped. Uh, for Worlds on the uh, LOL Esports website. So figured no time like the present. Um, I will say that every year, I think since Pick'ems has been available, I have been in the top 10% of Pick'ems. So uh, take that for what it is. I don't know if that's impressive or not, but um, I do tend to get the rewards uh, for Pick'ems. Uh, so you know, if you're just looking for something easy to follow here uh, to kind of lock in um, some picks that will get you points, uh, maybe you haven't had time to follow uh, this year. All good. I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah. So let's get into it. I'm going to start here. I think this video, we're going to go over the crystal ball picks. Uh, I'm going to tell you my picks, which you can see some of them now. Uh, I'm going to tell you any reasoning if I have it. And then, yeah, that's what we'll do. Um, so let me jump into it. Sorry, I'm going to pull up some stats on a different monitor um, so I can reference them later. But so first pick, uh, what will the duration of the longest single game be at Worlds? Um, I said 50 to 54 percent. Um, and I was basing I'm basing a lot of these stats off of Games of Legends um, stats for teams and leagues. And the being above 54 minutes um, in LCK would have been pretty far out of normal. So uh, I think that it's very unlikely, given the number of games, I think that it will go over 55 minutes. But, you know, it could. Um, so I think that's why I'm there. Um, how many pentakills will there be at Worlds? Um, I said three plus because, once again, if you're looking at uh, LCK stats from this past split, there was far, far more than three plus. Showmaker uh, had two on his own. So I just think with the number of games that gets played at Worlds, <laughs> including play-ins, um, it's a pretty large volume of games. Um, so I think that there is a good chance they will exceed three. Um, which Drake will be killed the most at Worlds? Uh, this one famously is just a guess. I mean, there's no real way to know this. It's literally just guessing. So uh, I put in Hextech every year. I think it's one for me once or twice so far. Uh, so just keep on keeping on with Hextech. Um, okay, don't need any more explanation there. How many Baron Steels will there be at Worlds? I think this one can be a bit of a crapshoot, but once again, I think, you know, there is a very large volume of games that are played. And if we change pick here, the rest of the picks are kind of a small window, uh, only a couple games. So just kind of statistically, um, the chance that it's going to fall within these small windows versus fall within everything above, above nine. Um, I just think taking the field, given the um, large amount of games, is the play. Um, and then... How many reverse sweeps will there be at Worlds? Um, I put in zero because it says right here, out of a total seven best of fives. Um, and then if you think, like, if let's say one reverse sweep happens in these seven total best of fives, that's basically like saying the chance of a reverse sweep to happen is above 14%. You want to think about it that way i believe my math checks out there so i personally believe it's not as high as 14 percent of all best of fives are reverse sweeps i feel like reverse sweeps are far more rare than that um so based off of that if i'm going by the numbers that would mean i think it's under one uh reverse sweep that will happen out of seven so zero is the guess let's see champions um, this is going to be interesting to some people. I think this depends on where you believe the meta will be, but we will talk about it. Who will be the most 
played in different roles at Worlds. I think this year uh, is going to be less diverse in that regard from last year. I think, you know, last year, I think I picked Poppy. I, th I believe it was correct um, because Poppy at that time was being played top jungle and support. I think this year she's mainly going to be support if anywhere else probably not anywhere else you know ha always has a chance of getting played jungle i think poppy would maybe be an acceptable choice here but i went with silas i think silas support is actually doing fairly well uh, unironically uh right now i i believe there's a chance that someone will at least try it at worlds uh they might not be successful but you know um uh, it is doing well in solo queue. Uh, I think Silas mid is going to be high prio as it is in basically every worlds. Um, and he also just got buffed. He has a really high play rate in diamond plus solo queue on the patch. So I think he has a good chance of at least being tried support because of the win rate and play rate in solo queue. And then also, obviously he'll be played in, in mid as well. And there's an off chance he could see a top game. You never know. It depends how much Pryo is on Silas. Um, you know, crazier things have happened. So that's why I'm saying Silas. I just think the diversity of champions being picked in different positions, unless I'm missing a very obvious one, is not as diverse as it was last year. Um, who will be picked the most during Worlds? Once again, I think Silas. I think his play rate's really high. Uh, currently in solo queue for Diamond Plus globally. Uh, this is all done with Lolalytics, if, if anyone's curious. Um, and I think that, you know, he generally, a lot of times at the beginning of Worlds, isn't super banned a lot, but he's more picked. He's kind of like a Swiss Army knife, you know, um, as metas evolve um, and, you know, worlds is kind of unique in that the meta is frozen in that state for quite a while and a ton a ton of games get played on it and i just feel like once you start getting that data once people start identifying what the best alts in the game are and start building comps around those kinds of things think about maokai last year um, silas automatically goes up in prio it's a good chance we're going to see things like twisted fate silas goes up in prio yada 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 so i just think silas uh, while he doesn't always feel completely oppressively broken, I think as an answer to a lot of meta team comps, uh, he will get picked a lot. Um, moving on, who will be banned the most during champion select at Worlds? I think for me, it's Yone right now. He is currently the highest played champion globally in high elo, uh, Diamond Plus MMR. Um, I think there's some really skilled Yone players at the tournament, uh, namely people like uh, Zeka on Hanwa are very, very good Yone players. Quid can play a good Yone. I know he's on 100T. He might not even see the main stage or, you know, see it for a short period of time. But still, I think the prio on Yone will be really high. I think to a degree against a lot of players, it's going to be kind of unwarranted. There's a lot of mid laners that, that maybe aren't great on Yone, but he can also be flex top. Um, you know, I think you wouldn't also be too crazy to... Well, anyways, I just think he'll be the highest band champion. Mostly, or a lot of it's because of hype, and there are some really strong Yone players. I think Nautilus... <laughs> so anyways, before I say that, uh, who will have the most total deaths at Worlds? I think Nautilus is always a safe pick here. Um, I think... He is in the meta. If you go and look at, once again, uh, Diamond Plus uh, pick percentage globally, he is definitely in the meta. Him and Thresh as, you know, these kinds of engaged type champions are very meta. I just feel like Nautilus, if he's in the meta at all, is almost always the highest death champion because, you know, his entire job is to start fights and go in kind of with reckless abandon. Um, once he's in, he's in, and he usually goes down in the team fight, but his team might still win. So, um, anyways, uh, who will have the highest win rate at Worlds? Uh, minimum of five games played. I think kind of based off the logic I was saying for Yone before, I think he will get banned quite a lot, um, but I think he will 
get, you know, once again, this is a very large volume of games. I think he will get at least five games played, probably more. Um, and I do think when he is picked, uh, he will be effective. Um, this one, I'm not like 100% sure on. It's just a, It's just a guess based off of how many people are playing him globally at high elo and at such a high win rate and then also you know looking at some of the boot camp stuff coming out of europe already uh yone is being played by a lot of the pros and has a incredibly high win rate by them so i think he will be doing quite good at the tournament all right let's move on to players um i'll try to speed this up a little bit i know i'm giving a lot of details but uh, anyways who will play the most different champions at worlds um i do believe that this will probably be a top laner uh it's between top laner or mid laner in terms of having the most diversity in champion picks um and i think bin uh just generally shows a really large champion pool uh he kind of knows what he wants to play in different situations. So I just think historically he has is exhibited a very large champion pool, and I think to a degree as well. This is also asking which team will have a really high number of games played to give a big opportunity to play a lot of different champions. I think BLG is a very strong team, and they should go quite far, so they should have a pretty high volume of games <clears throat> with which Bin can pick all kinds of different champions. Okay, who will get the most kills in a single game at Worlds? I have Viper. I think if you look at the stats for LCK last split, um, he Viper did have the most kills in a single game in the LCK split. So I don't really have a reason why I would choose anyone else logically. Um, so that's why. Um, who will have the highest KDA at Worlds? Once again, Viper, same logic. Uh, highest KDA in LCK this past split. Uh, who will get the most first blood kills at Worlds, I think is interesting as well. I think this is once again a volume of games question as much as it is a player question. I think uh, Zeus is just an incredible laner uh, through and through. I think T1, maybe this is contrary to a lot of people's belief because they kind of qualified fourth place, but I do believe T1 will go pretty far in this tournament. Uh, if you look at their stats, they're really not that far behind Gen G in a lot of the important stats for teams, in my opinion. Win rates, uh, towers taken, towers lost, all that fun stuff. They're really not that far behind Gen G, all things considered. Win rate as well, just game win rate. I'm not talking series win rate, but game win rate, they are not all that far behind. Um, so I do think Zeus, as an outstanding top laner, especially in the laning phase, will have the most first blood kills. Um, <clears throat> who will get at least one pentakill at Worlds? I think this is a little bit of inside baseball in terms of if you look at the stats. But in this past LCK split, Showmaker did have two pentakills. Uh, I don't think D plus will do particularly well in the tournament, but if we're going to just say a player, I think who will just get a pentakill at some point, it is going to be showmaker. Um, all right, let's move on to teams. Um, this first question is essentially, I, I realize what it says here, uh, but basically what it's asking is which of the minor region teams do you think will go the furthest? Um, and I think we talked, I talked about this on the last video. I do think PSG is kind of head and shoulders above kind of the competition down there. So I think just based off of the numbers, um, I have to go with them. This one's going to be a little surprising. Which team will win the shortest game duration at Worlds? Um, uh, I did put a hundred thieves and purely, I think that is because they're playing in the play in tournament. Um, I do believe that their draw in the play-in tournament is weaker this side of the bracket they're playing against you know rainbow seven first and then playing against either gigabyte marines or uh japan uh what is it softbank um so i think those teams are both all those teams are not the strongest uh i mean gigabytes okay but they have to play full be a, th be a best of threes as well so i do think that there's a good chance if they end up playing against uh 
you know, any of those teams in a best of three, there will be at least some blowouts, especially against Rainbow Seven. Uh, that's kind of where I'm banking on here, that there will be a very short game they play against Rainbow Seven. Um, so that's why. <clears throat> um, and then which team will have the most Baron steals at Worlds? Um, I think this is, once again, this is a quite tough um, call to make. Uh, but I do believe in Peanut's ability to steal Barons. Uh, you know, I think he has a track record enough to uh, warrant that. I also think Hanwa has a good chance of going deep in this tournament. Um, I think the meta is going to favor them pretty well. And just due to volumes of games and the player that Peanut is, I think that is why I'm giving it. Uh, which team will win Worlds? Once again, I gave some... Uh, justification earlier uh, i am a, an skt or a t1 fan um but i think just if also another reason is like if you just look historically when this team is in worlds uh, there's you know just by the numbers a really good chance that they will be in the finals if not win worlds um they're they're track record of making this tournament and winning it is unparalleled and their track record of being in this tournament and making finals is is actually absurd so uh, i know that a lot of people are not as high on t1 right now um but once again i think by the stats of the splits and just their historical track record of being in this tournament and doing well um that's what that is all based off of. I know that's a very controversial opinion. Uh, a lot of people would have BLG here, Hanwa, Jinji, but you know, I just think it's a it's a crazy bet to make that to say that they will be bad at this tournament, given all that information. Um, which team will play the most different champions at Worlds? I think this is once again kind of a. This is banking on T one doing well at Worlds, obviously. Um, and also banking on them having a large volume of games played because of that reason. And then also, generally, when T1 does really well at Worlds or at a tournament or whoever kind of the front runner team is, but it feels definitely definitely true for T1, is that they tend to be kind of meta leaders, uh, which means that they are going to, you know, in total, probably pick a lot bigger diversity in champions because they are basically setting what the meta is. All right. <laughs> I know that took a while, but those are my crystal ball picks. Uh, yeah, let me know. And uh, hopefully they uh, earn you some points in your pickups.